All right, we're going to do a quick video on the controls and connection to the existing boiler system uh, with the outdoor wood boiler. So here we've got the lines coming in. You can see them, I guess. Let me show them in some other videos, but here are the lines coming in. We'll eventually strap these up higher, uh, coming in, making connections to the copper, and then over here to the water to water heat exchanger. So when the water comes in, this is the supply line from the outdoor wood boiler coming down through here and then back up. The other side is entirely on our existing system side. So this is just exchanging heat. There's no water exchange between the two systems. If we look here, again, you can get uh, directionality coming from here. The water's going down, going across, going down here to the pump and the pump is pushing the water into the existing boiler. So I've got the, the face plate off of this so we can look a little bit deeper. But the first thing that's gonna happen when the house calls for heat is that that pump is gonna turn on and that's going to pull hot water from, uh, water through the heat exchanger is gonna be heating it up so the water that comes through here is going to be hot. And what we really want to have happen is that that pump will come on, we'll be pulling hot water through, the boiler will sense, the existing boiler here will sense that the water's already at temperature and it won't turn on uh, the firing mechanism. So we don't want we don't want it heating up down here. We don't want the damper to open. We don't really want any of the rest of the process to take place because it already sees that the water is hot enough and it just distributes the heat through here. Now, ideally, we do want this to turn on if anything happens to our outdoor wood boiler heat supply. So if the fire goes out, if we leave for a week, um, any number of things, if the pump dies, you know, different things that could happen, we still want this system to function as a backup to our primary, which is that outdoor wood boiler now. Um, this also provides a backup to the water lines themselves. So again, as long as if the pump fails then we'll have some issues, but any other system that fails, like the, uh, the air to the outdoor wood boiler fails and so the fire goes out and it's not providing heat, well, that water is gonna start cooling off. And if it's very cold outside, we could run into problems. We shouldn't have issues that the, because the lines are buried quite deep, like four feet deep here, but they do come up to the boiler. The boiler itself is insulated, but you know there's going to be some, some period of time, some temperature where we could freeze the boiler. Now, as long as that pump's still running and we're, if this kicks on, we're providing heat, then we are actually going to be heating up this uh, heat exchanger, which would then heat up the water going out. So it'd be very inefficient for us in terms of uh, we don't really want to do it that way. We don't want to be heating the water to some minimal level and passing it through the boiler outside. But we also don't want to destroy that outdoor boiler. So it works both ways that really we want this to kick on at a lower temperature. And you can do that. I guess the shorter answer is that can be done. Um, there's different setups with different controllers. If we look at ours here, uh, there's a little dial. I'll try to get in close here. Uh, and this dial, if we get in close enough, you can see we have temperatures and that's going to set the high temperature limit. So that'll set the limit of the temperature that we will actually kick on the boiler to obtain that, that temperature for, uh, for the water. So I was able to turn that temperature down quite a bit for us and turned it down to about 140, or at least that was the goal. I may not have gotten it all the way down there. Uh, but basically the water coming in from the outdoor wood boiler is going to be coming in between 185 to 170. It seems to be modulating between those temperatures outside. We'll lose a little bit getting to the heat exchanger and then in the transfer here. But ideally, we would never get down as low as something like 140. If something has gone wrong and the house is calling for heat, but there's not enough heat coming from the outdoor wood boiler for whatever reason, and the temperature after it kicks on calls for heat, the pump's running, and it drops down to 140, then the boiler should kick on or the fire should kick on, heat up the water and maintain that temperature in the house. Now that would be a little less heat transfer if we're normally distributing around the house at something like 180, 185, um, then if we're distributing around at 140 or 135, well, it's maybe significantly less heat transfer, but we're not gonna freeze the house. Um, so it works well as a uh, as a backup system that way. And this is a very old controller. Almost, you know, most boilers that you're going to be working with are going to have newer controllers than this. 
and it seems to be a function that's present pretty much everywhere. But at the at the high level, I just wanted to kind of point out the the architecture of this system to say, you know, we put it on on the return line. We put the connection with the heat exchanger into our existing system on the return line so that the pump pulls it through, um, even if your pump was on supply side, pulling water through from the heat exchanger first so that we'll sense that it's at a higher temperature, won't turn on the, uh, the fire here, and will turn on though the, the pump to distribute hot water around your house. Um, so that's the way it's intended to work. That's the way it's working for us now. It's not the way that it was working initially. Put this back on. Um, so we had to make those adjust adjustments to that high temperature limit. Um, and I think you can do the same. That was a question I had when I was starting down this path. It wasn't very clear to me how we'd get it to work together. So I wanted to point it out for anybody else that's thinking about going this route and maybe has a similar question. That's it from now. Uh, leave a comment or question if you uh, want to know more. Thanks again.